What's up everyone? Today I'll be completing Blackfield from Hack the Box. This was a box that was rated hard and it's also a Windows box. We start this box off with our in-map scan and we find an open SMB share that gets us a list of users. And from there a couple users stick out and we find that the support user has pre-op disabled allowing us to dump the AS rep hash which we crack with John. Now that we have access to RPC client with a support user, we use Bloodhound to show that we can change the password for the Audit 2020 account. And this gets us access to the forensic share where we find lsas.zip and using PyPyCats, we dump the hash for service backup. Now that we have a hash, we can use pass the hash to gain access to the box with evil WinRM. And for root, we abuse the SE backup privilege, adding ourselves to the administrator group via group policy and forcing a GP update. From there, we can change the administrator password and evil win RM back into the box as administrator. And if you enjoy the video, be sure to drop a like and hit that subscribe button. So let's get started. Okay, we start this box off with nmap, sv, sc, oa, put it in the nmap directory and we'll call it Blackfield. And the IP address is 10.10.10.192. I've already run this, so let's take a look at the output. And we can see we have port 53 open. 88, 135, 389, so we can tell that this is an Active Directory machine. It has the domain Blackfield listed here. Um, it's got LDAP 3268. And so we can just kind of jump in here and see if we can find any open shares um, on port 445. So we'll just do SMB client minus L 10.10.10.192. And we see a few shares, and one that sticks out is profiles, I mean, along with admin and forensic. Uh, so we can test to see if we can access these with no user. I always forget that extra slash. There we go. Uh, access denied, so then we can try forensic. Nothing there. I spelled it wrong. Forensic. Oh, we can connect. Oh, but we can't access anything, so get out of there. Next one, profiles. Okay, and we have a bunch of profiles. So we could just turn recurse on and just try to m get everything, or we'll turn prompt off so it doesn't ask us. See if we can get anything. And looking at all these, it looks like it's trying to download stuff, but there's just nothing to download. So I'm gonna cancel that. And uh, we'll move in map back one real quick, and then we'll remove all these directories. Move in map back. There we go. Okay, so what we really are interested in here is all these names. So I'm just gonna kind of go up the list here. Copy them, and we'll get ourselves a users list going. We turn set paste on, and there is our user list. So we'll cat user list, uh, pipe through to cut, uh, the del delimiter we're after is space, and we want the first field. No, doesn't look right. Looks like we want one to the third field. So third field gives us our list of users. Put that in the users and then we'll clean it up. Just clean up these bottom lines and we're left with 314 users. So going through this, 
Uh, we see a few that stick out. And I'll call this notable users. We have support, SVC backup, Okay, just kind of running through the rest of these. Looking for anything that stands out. And we have an audit 2020 user. So out of all these, um, attacking the outliers kind of makes the most sense. So we'll start going after these users. And the way we can do that is first thing we could do is look to see if any of them have pre-auth because sometimes people turn disable pre-auth for service accounts. So we can use get MP users. And uh, this kind of just shows you how to request them. So we could do get NP users.py um, on blackfield.local and look at SVC backup. Request. We don't have a password. Blackfield.local is not We need to give it no pass, and I think we need to pass it a DCIP as well. DCIP 10, 10, 10, 192. Okay, so user SVC backup does not have UF require pre all set. So what we could do is we can just kind of run this in a loop and say, for i in cat notable users dot text do get into users dot pi blackfield dot local request no pass dcp dcip and then we'll be done and we'll run this oh what did i name it? oh there's no dot txt here to make this simple we'll just move notable users to notable users dot txt we run that loop and we get a response for support. So if we weren't able to target any users and none of them stood out to us, we could have run the same thing over all of the users. It would have just taken a lot longer. So we want to grab this AS rep hash, and we can just copy this and we can Yes, rep. We can just put it in a file and we can pass it to John. And the word list we want to use is user share word list. Rocky.txt, I think, is where it is. Okay, so it looks like it finished and it was able to crack the password. So we can just John minus minus show, and then our AS rep, and it shows us this is the password. So first thing we want to try is evil winrm. With our user support and that password, I have it in the clipboard. It does not appear to be working. So we can try it again, and we'll give it blackfield.local slash support and see if that works. Throw out the password. Make sure the password is correct on our clipboard. Yeah, looks right. Okay, so it looks like it's not gonna let us log in. So from here, we need to get information on how to pivot maybe to a user that has a shell. So I'm gonna be using um, Bloodhound Python. 
which you can just install with pip install bloodhound like that and it'll install and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this down here and we can see its options by just running bloodhound python and it kind of tells you the usage here so first things first Whoa, okay. In order to use this, we are going to need the host name. So we'll go ahead and add in Etsy hosts. Ten 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 one ninety two. And it is DC01 dot blackfield dot local and the domain is blackfield dot local. Okay, so to run this, we need some options. We're going to need to pass it the username, the password, name server, the domain, the DC, uh, GC, which is global catalog host, and the collection method. We'll do uh, all. So we'll do, we'll make a directory called Bloodhound. We'll go into it and we'll run Bloodhound Python with our user, which is support. Our password. Our what do we need now? Name server ten 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 one ninety two. Uh, because if we look back at in map, we can see that it is running DNS. So we can use this as our DNS server. Our domain, which is blackfield.local. Our host, which is dco1.blackfield.local. Our GC, which is, again, I think it's dco1.blackfield.local. Our collection method is all. And let's try to run this and see what we're missing. That oh, looks like it might be working. Okay, so it finds a domain, connects to the LDAP server. I'll let this finish running. Okay, so it finished. Uh, looks like it found some stuff. And if we look at the files, we see a bunch of JSON files. Uh, so we can just kind of uh, run Bloodhound. And I've already got Neo4j running, so we can just connect. We'll come back over here. And we'll just run Thunar so we can drag and drop these. We'll just drag all these in. So I'll close this out. And put this on its own screen. Finish processing all files. So we can come over here. And you can see it's got 315 users, computers, groups. So let's look at our queries, find Kerberosable accounts. AS rep roastable, which is where we're at. So we can go ahead and we can just mark this user as owned since we are already that user. And looking at this user's properties, coming down here, we can see first degree object control we see that we have force change password on audit 2020, which was another one of our interest users. So if we look at this, look at help, abuse info, 
Uh, looks like we can just change the password, but since we don't necessarily have a shell on the box, we can use RPC client uh, to change the password for audit 2020. Okay, so we can just connect with RPC client minus U audit or support 10 10 10 192 passwords on the clipboard okay and from here uh, we can use set user info and it'll say set user info and there's also set user info two i think there's even three no just two so we can use set user info username level password and one second, and I'll pull up the documentation on this level. So we have on this website here, kind of talks about um, where the number 23 came from, which is just this article on user information class. You could read about this to see that user internal for information is 23 and you know what exactly that means. So for our purposes, this is going to be 23. So set user info to the username we're trying to change, which is audit 2020, level 23, and the password, we can just do poop 2020, and nothing for password expired. Uh, we'll put this in quotes. Okay, and something we can now check is on that SMD client with no username, or just listing 10, 10, 10, We have that forensic audit share that we couldn't access. So this is audit and we're changing the password for audit 2020. Uh, so maybe we'll have access to this. So we can try SMB client minus U audit 2020. And 10, 10, 10, 192. And the share we're trying to access is forensic. And the password is poop2020. And do we have access? We do. So now we have access to the share. Uh, so going in here, we'll look for anything interesting. And we have a commands output. And in here, we have domain admins, domain groups, domain users, firewall rules, uh, pretty much a bunch of things that are just outputs from gathering host information. So coming back and looking at memory analysis. In here, we have conhost, ctfmon. Uh, we have an lsas.zip. So just grabbing this and Hopping over to Google. Just maybe throwing the word exploit after it or abuse um, or credential theft. We're going to see that there's a lot of options um, and some juicy information in LSAS. So with that, that might be something that we want to target. So we'll go ahead and we will inget lsas.zip. Yes. And that's going to probably take a minute to download. So I'll let that run. OK, it looks like it's finished. Uh, it's 40 meg, so it took a little bit. Uh, so we'll make a directory called LSAS, and we'll move LSAS in there. And we'll unzip it. So how big is it now? 137 meg, so it's pretty big. Uh, so I'm just going to hop back over to Google and we can see that we can dump information from LSAS. 
how attackers ex extract credentials. It's like the first result. Um, so Mimi cats can be used. Um, I'm going to use PyPy cats, which is like a Python implementation of Mimi cats. It's pretty minimal. So just as a Google on that one. It's just a Mimi cats implementation in Python uh, by ScaleSec. And so you can just pretty much install the dependencies, grab it, install it, and we can just dump the information we want. So if we came over here, we could run PyPyCats. And I think what we're after is LSA. And mini dump since it's a DMP file. And the memory file would be lsas.dmp. And we get all that output. So we can just specify an out file and say lsas.dump. And looking at the, well, let's spell it right. Kind of bring over to a clean terminal and we'll look at lsas.dump. And in here, we can already see we have service backup. We have an NT hash. Uh, so looking at other usernames, service backup, so we can just cat this. Look at usernames. And we don't really see anything too interesting. We do see an administrator and service backup. So then we can look for NT hashes. Uh, I thought I thought it was NT. Oh, it's capital. So we would want a grep minus I or grep for the capital. And we can see these hashes. So we can pipe that through to sort minus U to make them unique. And it looks like we have three hashes. So we can try looking at them actually instead of trying them all there's no point to do that we can look at administrators grab the nt hash and we can try using evil winrm and evil winrm allows us to pass the hash by just specifying the hash so we need to do evil winrm minus i 10 10 10 192 minus user is administrator and the hash would be this and try that. Uh, it looks like it's timing out, so administrator is not going to work. But the other user that we had was svc backup. So we could try svc's svc backups nt hash with the same thing. Specify the hash. And the username was SVC backup. And it looks like we're, we're finally in the system. So all of that to finally get to the user. Coming back to desktop. Download user.txt. Okay, and that's user.txt. So to escalate to root, we can start by looking at our permissions. Who am I all? And we can see we are a backup operator. And we have SE backup privileges. So as a backup operator, normally you can move and change files that are important. Um, so in this, what we can do is we can head over to C, uh, Windows, Syswell. And to abuse this backup privilege, I am going to modify a group policy by adding our SID, which is shown here. 
at the top of the who am I? Then SVC backup SID. I'm going to add this to the administrator group. So we can head into C Sysval. Look in here, we see domain, go into domain. What's in here? We see policies. So this is where the group policies are. These two are usually here. We want to go after this one. And in here we have a machine. If I could spell machine. And then we have Microsoft. Windows NT. And second. So I'm going to copy this path so I don't ever have to type it again. And let's call it path. Okay, so what is in here is the group policy template. So I'm going to go ahead and download that. Okay, and then we're going to want to come in here. And at the bottom, we are going to, so in here you can see all of the privileges. Um, this is all from the group policy. We can come down here and we can add in a group membership section. And we can look at Windows Administrator SID. And I believe it is standard. So well-known SIDs. There, I saw it on here. So if we're looking for administrator, it is S15324, or 32544. So a local group used for administration of the domain. That looks like the one we're after. So what we want to do is we want to set this members equals our SID. SEC backup SID. like this. And from here we can just save the file. And we're just going to want to upload it. So I'll come back over here. I'll go into first. Okay, so if I tried to upload, if I deleted gpttmpl.inf EPTTMPL.inf. Oh, I need to run del, not delete. Okay, so I can delete it just fine and it's not in here. Now, if I tried to upload that file that I have that we modified, it's got the same name. It says successful. But then looking in here, it's not actually in here. So I think something strange with the backup operators is that we have to move them in here. Uh, we can't just upload directly here. So we'll go to C and we'll make a directory called temp. Okay, it already exists. So go into temp and then we'll upload gpttmpl.inf. Okay, and then type it just to make sure it is our file that we changed gpt if only I could spell okay and we see our SID down here at the bottom under group membership so it looks good so we can uh, copy 
or we can move uh, that GPT tmpl.inf to this path. Okay, and then if we cd into that path, now we look, we can see that the file's there. So now from here, we can force a group policy update with gp update forward slash force. And it'll give us a success or an error. Okay, and it tells us the computer and the user policy have been updated. So we can get out of this. And then when we win our M back in, we can look at who am I all. And we see we have a whole lot more privileges. So going up, the most interesting privilege being that we are a part of the administrator group. So we're pretty much an administrator now, but what we can do is we can net user administrator poop2020 to change the administrator password. It changes successfully. We can get out of WinRM, come over here, change the username to administrator. And we don't have a hash anymore. We're just going to use the password, which was poop2020 exclamation point. And we can see now that we are administrator on the box. So going back over to desktop, we can just download root.txt. And that's root completed as well. So that's pretty much the box. I hope y'all enjoyed it, and I'll catch you guys next week.